Welcome to the Business Legends Podcast, where we interview business leaders and entrepreneurs so that you can learn from their successes, become inspired, and meet the people that make change happen. I'm the host of the show, Reese Ron, along with my co-host, a friendly new guy named uh, Christian Webb. Say hello to the people. <laughs> For those of you looking on camera, he just gave you a little a little cheese monster there. But uh, today we are joined by our good friend, David Redding, a.k.a. Judge Dredd. Mr. Dredd, how are you doing this morning? Very fine. Just... Dread. Just dread. Okay. Just dread. Yeah, the dread. judge used to be there, but then they realized no. No. I'd make the. I'd be the world's worst judge. I'm a. I'm a side picker. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. I can't. I'm not a neutral. Yeah, you yeah. would. You would. You would. You would pick whichever way you thought was right. Hey, look, to, to me, I don't care about Washington. Yeah. And I don't care about Michigan. Yeah. But I started watching that game, and I'm like. I started rooting. Yeah. I mean, I'm just not capable. Of Who'd you not root for? Who'd you root for? Michigan. You want to know why? Yes, I do want to. know. Because I identify with Harbaugh. I love that. So he's he he thinks we're speaking Spanish right now. He doesn't oh, okay. know nothing about yes. sports, but um, you know, I just think Harbaugh got so so screwed over by by just everything with with all of the the side scouting and all that stuff and all the distractions. Like I've been rooting for Michigan the whole time, and it's been burning my dad up because he is an Ohio State alumni. Nah, so yeah, yeah. I mean, sure, there's not a little bit of that in there. You're like, well, yeah. You know, you know what though? Uh, so complete blasphemy, but um, my dad was rooting for Michigan in the in the national championship uh, because of the same thing. Because he's like, hey, it's Michigan's time. Like next year, I'll be I'll be rooting for Ohio once again. But oh, it's, okay, it's he's time, he's so. he has a judicial temperament. He does. See? Yeah, yeah. He's a that's, blasphemer. He's that, a blasphemer. That's right. So. In a trial, uh, and I'm a trial lawyer, in a trial, yeah. mm-hmm. you have to be very careful uh, if you start to get the upper hand, like your witnesses, you're succeeding, because the judge will subconsciously start weighing objections against you. Interesting. Yep, they can't help themselves. Yeah. That's why they want to be judges, which is great, because they have a sense of fairness that's baked into their little souls, and God bless them. Yeah. But I'm out there to get the best deal for my guy I can possibly get, and I mm-hmm. just do not care. It's not my job to care. Right. My job is to get the best outcome zealously for my guy, and then that's mm-hmm. actually how we get justice because adversely there's a guy on the other side of the room doing, doing the, the same darn thing. Exact opposite. Yeah. Right. Yep. Pulling the rope as far as you can. It's exactly it's like tug right. of war. Kind it's, of thing. It's, it's how our system in America is set up. Yeah. And it's the same with the legislature. People are like, why do we have to have the Democrats and Republicans fighting all the time? It's like because that's our antidote to overly ambitious men. That's the way the founders set it up. Yeah, and it and it works. Think about it. If you only had one voice talking. Yeah. Right. It it would be a dictatorship. Yep. You know. That's it would, exactly what it would be. It yeah. would be it would be a monarchy, which yeah. is what those guys were fighting against. They, right. They didn't want to just say, okay, no, let's let George Washington be king. Right. You we'd know, have they, a, we'd have a Putin in a heartbeat. Yeah. yeah. In a heartbeat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In a heartbeat. We've got plenty sure. of men that can do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Plenty of men want to do it. <laughs> yeah. Whether they can do it or not is, you know, yeah. is a different story. That's a whole other yeah. ballgame. So um, I, I want to talk to you a bit about F3. Of course, we had Gary Fry on the podcast several ago, and um, that's how we were introduced to you um, uh, inadvertently through that. So um, tell our listeners what F3 is, and uh, David here is, is one of the founders, and I want to talk a little bit about, about that and some of the culture behind F3. Right. Thanks for the opportunity. So yeah. F3 stands for Fitness, Fellowship, and Faith. Those are the three Fs. And they are in that order. That's basically an observation rather than a projection. So in other words, mm. this is something we observed happening after we started the group. And it started on 1111. Uh, so it's one 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 one. One 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 one. So uh, it started cool. with myself and another uh, my co-founder whose name is Tim Whitmire. He lives here in Charlotte. Yeah. Uh, his, but what's his real name? What's his real name? No, his real name is, is Tim Whitmire. Yeah. His, his F three name is OBT. OBT. Which OBT. Stands for uh, Obama Tim. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> he had a sticker, right? That's yeah. right. Because he had a bumper sticker on yeah. his Prius. Mm-hmm. Uh, so <laughs> Obama Tim. I really hope he had a Prius. He did. <laughs> he did. Now this would be awesome. what we call a truth nugget. Uh, okay. which is a kernel of truth wrapped in some uh, fables to make it more digestible. Perfect, perfect. But uh, there is no truth nugget to OBT. He really did have a Prius, and he really did have an Obama bumper sticker, That's which awesome. which made him an outlier amongst the predecessor group to F3. So OBT and I met at a predecessor group called the Campos. Okay. Mm. So the Campos was running an outdoor boot camp at Freedom Park in Charlotte, North Carolina, for about five years. And they called it the Campos because the city puts up signs that say Campo Cerrado, which means fields closed. Mm. You know, it's to tell, I guess, Hispanic people, for whatever reason, not to come on the fields when they're uh, fertilizing. So mm-hmm. uh, these knuckleheads decided to, to name themselves after the city sign. So they called <laughs> it the Campos. So nice. we met out there. It's an, it was an, and it still is, still exists. It is a outdoor boot camp for men free of charge. Every Saturday at 7 o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. these guys come out there and they just they do a boot camp together. Uh, it was an exercise group. Mm-hmm. Tim and I met there, OBT and I met there, and after a couple of years, the group went from about 12 guys to about 30 guys, 
and they were struggling with the fellowship, right? Because you get over a certain number of men, it's too many. So Tim and I had this entrepreneurial idea to start another group, a plant. Uh, and we launched that on 1-1-11. Uh, we did it by sending emails to about 80 guys we thought might benefit from it and say, hey, come and join us, do a workout. It's going to be an hour long, starts 7 o'clock in the morning at AG Middle School, Al Alexander Graham Middle School here in Charlotte. We thought we'd get five guys. You know, we thought five of 80, I don't know, is that from an SEO standpoint, is that a lot, or a lot of hits? Or <laughs> How many people open up your emails? You know, we thought that would be good, right? Uh, so we show up that morning, and it was not cold, but it was foggy. It wasn't a beautiful day. Uh, and it was 30 guys. Wow. And I That's said, quick. yeah, I said, you know. That's a pretty good conversion. Yeah, right, as we say I'm a, yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty good conversion. Yeah. But I, I'm, a, I'm not a, uh, a cynic, but I'm a skeptic. So I said, That's, that's New Year's resolution stuff. Right. Right? That, that won't last. Well, next week we have about 32. And we never had less than that. Wow. So at that point in time, what is now F3 was just called, I guess, Campos AG or something like that. We don't really have a name for it. Mm -hmm. um, and we kept doing it. We 30 guys, 40 guys. You know, it started getting bigger and bigger. Uh, maybe in one of those first few months, one of the guys was coming. Doesn't even come anymore. Uh, comes up to OBT and I and says, you know what this really is? This is really three Fs, fitness, fellowship, and faith. It turns around and walks away. So, uh, so it became F3. Uh, we didn't have a corporation or organization or anything. It was just a bunch of guys meeting every Saturday. Well, we started meeting during the week. I think Wednesdays we started meeting uh, in addition to that. We also quickly realized that we had too many men. Now, up until this point, the workout would always be led by OBT or, or me. We would always lead it. We'd, we're up to 50 now, and I'm like, okay, we got to split up somehow. we got to do something. So I grab a guy, and his F3 name happened to be The Rock. <laughs> right, happy to rock. What's the story behind that? But only his first name was Peter. Okay, so uh, you know uh, Peter the Rock from the, from the Bible. Right, I was right. It. Had no other no other meaning than that. Yeah. Uh, so the Rock was demonstrating to me a lot of leadership. So I take the Rock aside and I say, "Look, Rock, you notice how in the last few months this thing has grown?" He's like, "Yeah." I said, uh, "We started at thirty, now we're at fifty or whatever." And he goes, "Yeah." He said, it "Seems like we're losing a lot of that fellowship." Yeah, 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 yeah. I said, "I think a great <laughs> idea, Rock." would be for us to split the group into two. And um, that way, there would be two groups of, of 25 guys or so, and we would uh, you know, we'd get that fellowship back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he goes, I think yeah, that's really what we ought to do. I said, okay, we're going to do that. He goes, good. I said, and you're going to be the leader of the second group. And he goes, no. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. So you know, the, this is me cross-examining. You know, when you cross-examine, you get yes, 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 yes. You know, that's how right. you do it. So, but I was surprised by that no. I was like, what do you mean no? And he said, I can't do that. I said, what do you mean you can't do but it? But you're the rock. <laughs> you're the rock. I said, of course you can do it. Now, uh, I was in the Army for nine years before I became a lawyer, and I was an uh, infantryman and a Green Beret, and I learned how to lead physical training, PT, I and mean, it's kind of mm -hmm. what you do. Um, so I'd been leading a lot, and OBT had picked up some stuff from me. He knew how to do it, too. He's, he's good at it. Uh, the rock had been watching that and participating in it as a follower, but he could not visualize himself being the leader. Like, he just couldn't make that jump. And I just made the assumption that he would make that jump. And he said yeah. no. Uh, and I realized it was not uh, good leadership on my part to think that I could send a man out on a mission without properly equipping him. Mm -hmm. So at that point, maybe May-ish or so of that first year, we started a little leadership course. Mm -hmm. uh, we brought about 12 guys in. Uh, I think we did it five or six Fridays in a row for an hour. And we just taught them what Obi and T and I had learned uh, about how to lead workout and kind of the principles. How, how did you, uh, I, the only way I can say this is scholastically, but how, how did you prepare the curriculum for that? Like what was, what went into that? I'm That's sure great you question. Pre prepared yep. beforehand and such, right. but like how did you? Obi T um, and I sat down, got a cup of coffee, sat down and wrote out, these are the five uh, blocks of instruction mm -hmm. or six or whatever. I can't even remember. Uh, and we walked through it and talked through it and decided who would teach which part. And we actually had a third guy helping us. Uh, and we talked through it, and it was pretty loose. Uh, most of it was stuff we'd been talking about for, for a while. So uh, I can't remember if anybody, I didn't use any notes. I don't know if those guys did. But we, we did that orally, more or less. Um, and at the end of that six-week period, we um, graduated those guys, and they felt properly equipped to go lead the, the other workout. Now, the irony of it is six weeks later, 50 had turned into 60, so we split into thirds. So we took what was one and made three out of it mm -hmm. yeah. and um, said, you know, anybody can go where they want. And people kind of just filtered out to where they want. And that's how F3 became a leadership school.
or leadership organization. Okay. Because it started out. And was The Rock one of the people that yeah. were in this course? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, that he, and that he started his own oh, lookout yeah. after that? Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Was, you know, yeah. Was, just it was good. a little leading. Right. Yeah. Now, ironically, uh, The Rock, soon thereafter, <laughs> uh, had a brain tumor. Oh, uh, no. I set you up there. You laughed. And said, oh, ironically, yeah. I had a brain tumor. And uh, he, so he was debilitated. Jeez. And uh, he, the neighborhood he lives here in Charlotte, a bunch of guys were coming to the workouts from that. And uh, this is probably the summertime of that first year. One of the guys from that year comes up to me and says, Dredd, he says, you know, The Rock's got this tumor and all. And I was like, man, it's, you know, it's horrible, whatever. We're praying about him. He said, well, a bunch of us want to help out. Uh, at his house, you know, get the lawn mowed and help out his wife and all that stuff because he's, you know, laid up. And I said, hey, man, okay. You want me to come and help? Is that what you're telling me? And he goes, no, we just want uh, permission to wear our, our shirts because by then we were have these F3 shirts guys were wearing. And I said, well, A, you don't really need my permission. <laughs> yeah. But, and I think it's a great thing, but B, why do you want to wear them? Anyway, I'm just curious. And I said, well, we want people who might walk by to see that this is what this is what men do this is what we do and we want you know to shed the light on the organization that way so that became how f3 became kind of a service organization hmm. it all it seems it seems like uh one thing one thing i really want to commend you for you know we're, we've had you know business legends is a bit like um advanced education for us because we get to hear all the stories yeah. from entrepreneurs yeah. and, and their journeys and things and um one thing that i think is particularly amazing about your story is that once somebody presented a good idea, you just ran. Oh with yeah, it, you know, right. And uh, it, it's kind of incredible because a lot of people get that analysis paralysis where they where they say, oh, you know, what if what if uh, you know there's guys out drinking beer and cussing when they're when they're cleaning up yep. uh, the the rocks yard or yep. whatever else type right. of thing. And instead, it was just you know run with it. Oh yeah, because it, it all came from a good place. From the very start, yeah. we said embrace failure. So we uh, have an acronym for that, which is VAPE, which is the yeah. skills vape. of leadership, right? VAPE. Yeah. yeah. It was, I didn't even know what a vape was, and I came up with that. Mm -hmm. So I, people were like, oh, vape, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, boy, <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. know what vape was. So it's vision, articulation, uh, persuasion, and exhortation. So mm -hmm. uh, that th that is how a, a leader stays 43 feet ahead of the group he's leading. So that that's our, an expression is 43 feet. So when you have an organization and what, it's— What's the uh, significance of 43 feet? Is it, was it just something you came up with? The or? mode, yeah. age— uh, of men when we first started this was 43. Okay. So we, at the end of every workout, we do what's called a COT, a circle of trust. The guy says his hospital name, that's what your parents named you before they knew what your mission would be, you know, Joe Smith, whatever. Your F3 name, which is the name we've given you, and then your age. Mm -hmm. So we keep track of people's ages. Uh, and if you're less than 40, we say hate because you're young. <laughs> if you're f between 40 and 50, we say, um, respect I does, it, does it stand for does does no. hate stand for anything no, people just, just started yelling it, it. <laughs> right so if you're Young over hate, 40 hate. over 40 your that's res, awesome over 40 your respect over 50 double respect so i'm triple respect there so we go. anyway we're going around a circle and we noticed obt i think noticed this first is like you ever notice how many guys are 43 and i said yeah that's really true i think he was i was 47 he was still in his 30s and, I, and so we started unpacking that and thinking about it and i think it's because that's the age a man uh, suddenly finds himself in a different situation in life. All right, so he's a little older, right? He's a little farther in his career, probably the boss or a boss. He's walking in the break room at work, and people stop talking and look at him, and he's like, who are we talking about? And it was you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, his father is starting to decline, right? He's in his 70s. So he's not really calling his dad for advice anymore. His dad's calling him, right? He's suddenly too old to be making kind of idiot mistakes anymore. And he also finds himself to be very lonely. You know, mm -hmm. that's a big part of F3 is this is, is male pattern loneliness, you know, the cure for that, uh, which is prevalent amongst American men. Now, it's funny. When we started this, nobody was talking about it. Now, New York Times is writing about it. So, you mm -hmm. know, the culture has agreed with us. But uh, this loneliness, what we call the second hole in the heart of a man, is, uh, is a huge problem. That's a big part of what F3 does is it provides friendships that are large bore that don't get shaken out, right? So uh, 43 was the most common name. So we adopted that, or most common age, the mode. We adopted that and said, well, as a leader, you must stay 43 feet ahead of the group you're which is not far. Yeah. Right? You know, yeah. you just got to keep moving. One <laughs> You got to have vision, right, of where we go next. You got to have articulation, be, be able to ascribe vision to others. Persuasion, which is to initiate first movement. And you got to be able to exhort, which is to encourage and incentivize men to breach obstacles that you're going to encounter along the path. So that's what a leader does. 
Mm. Doesn't make him virtuous. It just means he can do that. Hitler could do that. Yeah. So we don't get wrapped up around good or bad. We yeah. just say, if you can do these things, you're a leader. If you can't do them, you're not a leader. You may be a manager. With, you know, nothing wrong with that. Um, but but it, but to, 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 to be a leader, you have to be able to do those things. Now, uh, there's a process by which we help men become leaders. And the first part is schooling, which is when we provide formal leadership instruction, which we do. And then there's uh, apprenticeship, which is the opportunity to have an, an older leader come alongside you and help you. And then that third one, which is the trigger question that you asked me, which is failure, which is an unwanted outcome that builds a leadership foundation. We expect to fail. So, and we don't, we don't get wrapped up around it. Many of the things we've tried to fail. Yeah. Many. Mm -hmm. uh, but failure is the way you learn about what, what isn't going to work, right? It eliminates those things. Um, and success is actually very hard to scale because you don't know why, right? So fa failure, sense. man, failure, failure works, all right? And then, and then the last thing is opportunity. I think I reversed them. Opportunities before failure. Opportunity is a leadership position that allows you to be in front of people. I never thought about that. Success is hard to scale because you don't really know why you succeed. Yeah, could be That's luck. It's an yeah. interesting thought. Right? Yeah. It could be luck. I mean, you start failing, you start pe peeling away. Okay, well, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. And you're kind of left with what does work, right? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, so that, that's why we were never afraid of failure. So we didn't really worry about planting all these workouts to see what happened. You know, a lot of stuff we've done has just been, you know, has not worked. And it's kind of reduced us to the core of, of what does work. So by the end of that first year, you know, we had 100, more than 100 guys. Wow. We started fielding requests from other cities. Uh, to come down there and help them plant them. You know, we call that the brother-in-law effect. It's like guy in Charlotte's like, I love this man, but I got this brother-in-law in Raleigh. <laughs> the brother-in-law yeah, effect. <laughs> and he's a real sad clown. So sad clown is a guy we call who's uh, uh, sad on the inside but happy on the outside because he thinks he needs to fake it. Mm -hmm. uh, those are our target guys, right? So mm -hmm. uh, my brother-in-law's a sad clown. What, do we, what can we do? I was like, where do you live? Raleigh. All right. So we would go out there and plant a workout in Raleigh. We planted a workout in Atlanta. We started doing that. Uh, we couldn't keep up with it, so we sat down and we wrote out the curriculum. Instead of, you know, just going up there and doing it personally, we wrote it out, and that book is called Free to Lead. Um, which, and you, you actually wrote a book yeah, with it. Okay. Free to Lead. Yeah. Unshackling of the Modern Day Warrior or something like that. Yeah. Uh, OBT and I co-authored that. That's awesome. Yeah, we're now on, on volume two or version two or whatever. Yeah. 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 That's that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so how, how many of those uh, locations do you have now? <sighs> okay, it's... 49 states, for some reason we can't get Maine or whatever. <laughs> so I think it's Maine. Um, we have... You just need to, you just need to like <laughs> yeah, yeah, plant yeah. one. Just, uh, just move somebody out to Maine. <laughs> at 17 countries or something like that. We have 5,713. I'm throwing numbers out there. It's over 5,000 wow. individual workouts. Wow. Yep. That's incredible. Yeah. So curious about... Uh, I, know, I know it's free, um, but have you, have you ever bounced around the idea of a small subscription model so that you all can give back oh, yeah. to the community? Sure. So that's what the foundation is about. So we don't use a subscription model, and this is a... Uh, you know, if you're in an organization long enough, the same things keep going around and around because people yeah. forget. So institutional memory. From the very start, what do we do about money? Mm -hmm. right, so initially, we had no corporate... We were just guys, right? Yeah. Uh, me being a lawyer, people started saying, what if we get sued, you know, and... Uh, we still so we started to institutionalize some things because we felt like we had to. But one of the things that we found out quickly was if you, uh, let's say you were going to do a, a mud run together or you know, something like that, mm -hmm. and we wanted to take down a bunch of slots, you know, so we're together. One guy gets on the computer, takes down a bunch of slots, puts it on his credit card, got to get paid back. You know, it turns into this nightmare thing, right? Mm -hmm. So we wanted to have a bank account. Well, if you're going to have a bank account, you got to have an EIN, right? Mm -hmm. you got to have mm -hmm. corporate. If, to get an EIN, you got to have a corporation. So we incorporate it. That's why. That's how it all started, right? So uh, we've been meandering around for 13 years, different corporate, you know. So where we've landed is we have a nonprofit that's the main entity, and we have a 501c3, which raises money, foundation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's funded entirely through donations and the sale of gear, T-shirts, and stuff like that. Yeah. And some fees we charge for uh, leadership and schools and yeah. events like that. But it's we have five core principles, one of which is... It's free of charge. Mm -hmm. And it always, always, always will be. Yeah. Um, so because of that, we'll never have a subscription model. Yeah, it's super cool, though, because, like, you have enough people to where you can really make a difference there. I hope so. Like, even you if know? you, like, I mean, shoot that many people, you could build you could build schools and stuff if you wanted to. You could build, like, houses on a regular basis. Right. Like so we don't want to fund anything that anybody's already doing mm -hmm. just as well. Right? Yeah. So say somebody comes to us, oh, I want to give some money to Habitat for Manage. Like, Go ahead. They're already doing that. 
Yeah. You know, uh, but anything that's uh, it it's it's generated by the men in the workout as something mm-hmm. to do, some sort of community impact thing, and it's unique and it doesn't require the funding of another organization. That's what that's any, what we're any looking examples? for. examples? Yeah. So, for instance, in Greensboro, they built a public park. Oh, that's cool. In a part of town that didn't have one, so these guys got together and they purchased the land and they hmm. built a like a little, I don't know, like it's, I think it's got even got a vegetable garden in it. So, <laughs> like one of those yeah. like yeah. take and take and give vegetable yeah, gardens. Yeah, or yeah, right. yeah, something like that. Yeah, so and big there's big like a play yeah. set and all that stuff. So yeah, we love stuff like that. Like we want to fill in the gaps where the other things aren't working. Mm-hmm. You know, that's where that's that that's what we're mainly oriented on. Well, that's pretty cool. That's what the foundation does. Uh, stuff that it's entrepreneurial in this sense. Like we want men to come up with their own solutions to problems, mm. men on the ground to look around and say, here's a problem in my town may not exist somewhere else, but here's a problem in my town. Mm-hmm. And here's how I, here, here's how I visualize my vision. Here's how I visualize solving it. And it's going to take a, it's going to take some men. It's going to take some money. And that, those are what we fund. And we had like a uh, shark tank kind of thing this year to do that. And we did it on Facebook and we voted and, it was pretty cool. Yeah, hearing the ideas that people have, it's it's pretty wild. A lot of it's micro, you know. It's like mm-hmm. putting together school lunches and stuff that you know for a certain set of kids. Micro I mean, it's, matters it's, to the people there. I, it, I, just, it really does. It's our it's our model. So you know how most organizations are very much top down because it makes sense to do that, where they say you know the organization on the top says this is what we're going to do and it kind of says you know infiltrates it down. Yeah. So we have what we call the reverse inflow inc- incubator, reverse mm-hmm. flow incubator. Uh, the idea is that the ideas come from the bottom. Yeah. And by the bottom, I just mean the guys out on the, the tentacles of the starfish. And that's how we do organization. Uh, that's where the ideas come from. So uh, we got that idea from the uh, architectural boat tour in Chicago. If you've ever done that, it's pretty cool. But, you know, you go around the, the Chicago River and you're going through all, and they're pointing out all these architectural features. They get to the end and they say, and here's the funniest thing, is that the, the river actually flows backwards now. And the reason why it flows backwards is because it used to flow into Lake Michigan. And it took all these impurities, you know, because it was meat packing district, all stuff, and put it in Lake Michigan. Uh, but if you go to Lake Michigan now, there's people swimming, right? It's pretty amazing. Chicago's amazing, right? Mm-hmm. See these people swimming, like, right? You know, like, that water's yeah. not dirty. The reason why it's not dirty is they reverse the flow. Hmm. Somehow, engineers did it. Yeah. So the water flows out of Lake Michigan. So I said, What a feat that was. Yeah. yeah. So I'm sitting there. I did the arc of, I did it two or three different times in my life for different reasons. I'm sitting there. After F3 started, I was like, Oh, well, that's what we do. Yeah. Right. We we reverse the flow instead of like OBT and I or somebody else at the at, you know at the center of the organization saying this is what we're going to do we're going to stop bullying or something like that. No, we don't do that. We, you know we just we just free you to lead. That's why free yeah. to lead. You know, so a guy out in Kalamazoo, F three Kalamazoo, comes up with an idea because this is what he's looking at in Kalamazoo, right? Mm-hmm. And then we say, ah, well, we don't know if it'll work or not. Once you give it a shot, sounds sounds beneficial. Yeah, sounds advantageous. Honestly, I think that would work well on the marketing and slight, slight operations side of a lot of uh, franchises too. I agree. Yeah, Those right. Franchisees get really upset that the franchisor doesn't have like the best interest in heart because it's not local. Sure. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if they did that in that direction, they'd have much better feel. Right. The the uh, corporate example that I, that I I know of that that um, leads in the same way is actually Starbucks. Oh. So, so the way that Starbucks comes up with new beverages and such is they ask the baristas. Huh. So, so they yep. like the local right. baristas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's neat. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, people that have Starbucks tenure or whatever, they'll say, you know, what what types of drinks do you think would be would be would be a good thing to feature? Right. And that's right. how they come up with their interesting new features every interesting. Time. So, yeah, probably sense. in Seattle yeah. where their where their HQ yeah, is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because right. your headquarters is in New York, <clears throat> and you only make drinks in New York. Mm-hmm. You, they might not hit in South sure. in South Carolina. And yeah. that's how. Uh, for a very great degree, that's how we view this thing. That's why we have a mission statement, a credo, and five core principles, and zero rules. So <laughs> if you're missional, like you're advancing the mission of F3, which is plant, serve, and grow men's small workout groups in order to invigorate male community leadership, if you're doing that, if it's missional, then you know that, that's, you're, you're, that's what you're we basically want you to do. following the rules. Right. <laughs> credo <laughs> is rules. leave no man behind, but leave no man where you find him. You know, that's our credo. You know, that's the thing you remember if you can't remember anything else, right? Yeah. And so as long as it, that's what you're doing, well, why are you doing that? Because these guys need help. Well, okay, good, right? Don't leave them where you found them, though. In other words, don't go to a man who's who's what we call a sad clown, you know, and, and go and tell him, hey, you're great the way you are, man. Nobody's great the way they are. Mm-hmm. You know, you encourage them to accelerate, right? Get in better shape. That's the F3 idea is you get more fit, 
right? Because F3 is about consistent fitness. It's not about being a giant stud or anything like that. Yeah. It's about being consistently fit. So you're not facing every New Year's with a New Year's resolution, trying to lose that same 30 pounds over and over again. Just being consistently fit makes you more confident and happy. Absolutely. Like, I mean, now you should read about it all the time. I mean, it was like only 11, 14 years ago, whatever it is, 13 years ago. But it wasn't that common for people to say all those things, right? Spiritually, whatever. So that's that's the first F, is to be consistently fit. Second F is fellowship, and that is to be around other men who you're friends with just to be friends, right? Mm -hmm. Just yeah. just to be there. It's not because you're doing something completely altruistic, you know, like volunteering for a Habitat home. And it's not something for debauchery purposes, like a golf trip. Mm -hmm. You know, so the problem with the culture is it views men gathering with suspicion. Why don't you have any women in there? Like, what are you brewing up in yeah. there? Oh, well, we're, <laughs> oh, we're building a house. Okay. Oh, we're getting drunk and going to strip club. Okay. Anything in between, like, they're suspicious, right? Right? So, yep, that's, yeah. That's an excellent point. I that, never thought about it like right, that. But right, it's totally building right. a whole community based on pure misogyny. That's, that's yeah, right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, and people yeah, ask me that, you know, because I've obviously given a speech a time or two. And I was like, oh, we ain't doing it because we hate women. We're doing it because we love women. You know, I have three daughters. And, you know, uh, we do it so we're better husbands and better fathers. I've never had a wife of an F3 guy come up to me and say, your organization is horrible. It's destroyed my marriage. Quite the opposite. <laughs> so much so. This happened to me so many times uh, that that happened or some, somebody would come up to me and say, turn me, you, me, save my life, turn my life around, all this stuff. And I've never met the guy. Don't have anything to do with it. Uh, finally, I was at a, a mud run, like I mentioned, we down, I was down in South Carolina, and we were doing it with one of the uh, Columbia's rescue mission. I can't remember the name of it. So they, these guys were coming off of uh, drug addiction, wow. and uh, the, our guys down there were serving them, and they got them to come out and do this obstacle race, which is, if you've ever done it, it's very difficult, yeah. right? Yeah, we so, did one in 2018. Oh, okay, yeah. Yep. So uh, they, I'm running with these three other guys, and I, I don't know them, uh, all guys out of the rescue mission down there, um, and, and so we ran it, and, uh, and then these guys are now sober and whatever. And we get to the end, and one of them comes out to me and says, uh, hey, uh, my family's here. Would you, uh, they want to meet you. And I'm just, on the inside, I'm, I'm embarrassed by that because I know I've been through this before, and I know what's going to happen. And I've had nothing to do with this man's recovery at all. At the request of the man in Columbia, because I'm the – nominal at the time head of the organization they asked me to be there mm -hmm. and i said yes and they said will you run with these guys you know it'd mean a lot to them i don't know why because they don't know me but i agreed to do it and i know from doing these things that i'm going to get praise and accolades that i don't deserve mm -hmm. and i i've been super uncomfortable with that from the very start so much so that when it would happen i would say well blind hug you know that kind of junk you know and try to deflect it mm -hmm. um and i always knew that when i did that the people would be, well, blind hug. Sorry, what's that? Well, blind hug. You know, blind hug can find a, a nut. You know, a blind squirrel can find a nut. Oh, okay, okay, right? okay. Yeah, yeah, blind uh, squirrel. Blind yeah. hug finds a truffle. Yeah, yeah. yeah okay, right? I got like it's luck. You. I've never heard that expression. I've yeah. always heard blind squirrel. Sorry. Blind squirrel. Yeah, yeah. Blind hug. That's a kinetic. That's the kinetic. Maybe that is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but I've always said something like that to kind of try to, you know, stop, stop watches, right? Taunts, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and I tell myself when I did that, I'm being humble. Uh, but that's not true humility. True humility is not thinking of yourself, thinking less of yourself. It's thinking less of yourself. C.S. Lewis, right? That's not. I didn't make that up. Uh, so that that's not true humility. I just did not have enough confidence to understand grace, and I I was not being a good leader of the organization because someone comes up to me and heaps this praise on on. It's not me, right? They're praising the organization. They just need a focal point for it. And I had been reading, uh, I can't even remember where I read it, but it was about George W. Bush, the son. And it said that when someone would uh, meet him and they were just like, oh, thank you for uh, praise, just heaping praise on him, whatever yeah. it is, for, for America, you know. And he would just say, honored. And the reason why he would say honored is because it was an honor for him to receive the praise directed to the organization that he had the uh, the grace of God to run. Mm -hmm. That's that's what he said. Worse that fact, I'm paraphrasing. Yeah. So I had read that shortly before this this mud run. So uh, flashback, man, come up to me, my family. I'm like, oh, 
walking up to meet them, and I could see it. it was like 10 people. You could tell it was his parents and his, maybe his wife or a strange wife for all. I know this guy's been a drug addict for five years, yeah. right? He's the lost coin that's now found, right? So I'm walking up there, and I, like, I know, oh, gosh, well, it's going to be one of these things. And I thought of that W thing. Mm-hmm. Sure enough, I get up there, and I think it was his mom, if I remember correctly, comes up to me, she hugs me. Thank you so much for what you've done for our son. You've returned him to us, you know, and and uh, they're very devout people, and they started saying lost coin, lost sheep, you know, yeah. all that stuff. And, uh, you know, it's, it's wonderful, and it's God thing, and all that stuff. And I just looked at them, and I said, honored, honored, honored. And I could see in their eyes that it fulfilled their need to thank someone. Because in their minds... Mm-hmm. A miracle had happened. They had given up on their son. And it's, uh, it's funny that the son, when I was talking to him during the race, because he's in good shape, he's a guy who's a drug addict, he had been just like me, had been a military officer, hmm. and had got addicted to oxycot. I don't even remember, and got strung out on heroin, or however it ended for him. Hmm. And he had gone to this, um, gosh, I really want to remember the name of it, because it's a great organization in Columbia, I just can't. Remember it. We'll put it. At, we'll, yeah. we'll look it up. Something, it the, yeah, uh, something uh, street, yep. something street, and uh, he had gone there, and then uh, our guys down there had been doing a workout with them every week, and then he had gotten in shape, and then here he was, and uh, I wasn't one of these. Therefore, if the grace of God walks, that's not in the Bible um, at all. It was just one of these moments of, it's not me that did anything, right? It's the fact that this was God's intent and that this worked and this is how this guy got there. Mm-hmm. And I'm just I'm just the guy standing there when they need to say thank you to somebody. Mm-hmm. And the least I can do is to receive that so that people feel like they've thanked someone because a miracle has happened. And I'm I'm the guy God sent to receive it. That's all, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, honor. And ever since then, I've known what to say when somebody says, well, that's a wonderful thing, that I know that at the most I stood at the top of the hill and pushed a pebble. You know, at the most, you know, and I know that then I don't have to feel so false humility, you know, mm. or it's almost, it's almost like guilt. It's almost like, yeah, guilt, right. Your you're guilt. You feel guilty right. that, that, you know, while while, you know, you were integral in starting the organization 13 years ago, um, you know, you'd never met this person before. He's he's he could have just been a stranger right. to you if right. you passed him in a Walmart or right. whatever else. Right. Type of right. Thing. But um yeah, I mean that that can skill. be right. Yeah. Well, I, I I had the same problem when someone would thank me for my service, my military service. You know, mm-hmm. and the reason why I joined the army is because my we don't have any money. Mm-hmm. I mean, I didn't do it because I was like I had this patriotism, and I, I did it because you know it was Ronald Reagan. Believe it or not, how that's how old I am. Would start was building up the military, and it was scholarship money, and even a knucklehead like me could get a scholarship, and uh, I did it for that. You know, so I, somebody would say thank you for your service. I was like always felt. You know, and I, I finally started saying, this is how I respond. Thank you, I would do it again. I mean, I don't, thank you, I would do it again. There's mm-hmm. the truth, I would. Mm-hmm. Because those were formative years for me. And it was really much more to my benefit than it was to, to the United States, you know, of America or the government of the Army. They didn't need me. You know, but it formed me and helped me much more than, than I helped them. So that's what I mean. Thank you. And I thank you for being a taxpayer. And I get all this leadership training on your nickel. Because... A great amount of what went into our early F3 was things that I just learned at Ranger School or, you know, Special Forces Qualification Course or something. Just because these tenets of leadership are timeless, they're all the same. Now, when when you sat down with uh, with OBT, um, and how how did you know him originally? By the way, you just, just a workout. You just Campos. Met him. Yeah, yeah. Just met him from Campos type yeah. of thing. Um, was was there any particular reason? Oh wait, a second, that, let me back up one minute. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So, I met him. I thought I met him in a workout. Mm-hmm. About a month after I started going to the campus, he went there before me. I went to church. I was at church. I was a member of a very large uh, church in Charlotte on Providence Road. And I went to pick up my uh, daughter from Sunday school. She was little. And the Sunday school teacher, you know, was ever in that. I shook his hand and I said, mm-hmm. hey, thanks. You know, good to see you. And whatever. I turned around, he goes, Dread? And I turned around and I said, I looked at him. I was like, OBT? <laughs> <laughs> so you just knew. I, well, I'd seen this guy for at least a year. Right. At some, I just never had, because I was in, in this church, we weren't engaging. We were sad yeah. clients. I, was, I call it change jingling. We were standing there jiggling change in our pockets as men instead of engaging one another. Mm-hmm. And it, it just was ironic that I I actually did know the guy. Yeah. In fact, I was on a commission 
in the church with his wife. Oh wow! And you just didn't never engage. It, but I but we never connected in any significant way until the campus. It's like yeah. that, it's that grocery store mentality. Yep. Walk yep. through with your head down. Yeah. Grab your pasta. Grab yeah. your cans and move. Yeah. Um, ju- just before you arrived this morning, Christian and I were actually talking about that because we were talking about we were we were sitting next to each other having a conversation as we often do, and and we were both messing around on Facebook, you know, right. and not to bite the hand that feeds. Of course, we do a lot with Facebook, sure. with marketing and whatnot. But not the Facebook's yeah. a wonderful thing. It's not yeah. probably mean, Facebook's the way some people use Facebook, right? Exactly. Yeah. And and we were talking about how you know it's it's easier to connect um, with people as far as technology is concerned, than it ever has been in oh, human man. existence. You kidding? I can, yeah. I can call you, I can email you, I can text you, I can, I can uh, send you a message on LinkedIn. Like, right. there's so many different ways that, to connect with somebody. And yet, at the same time, uh, we, we both feel as though it's, it's harder to connect with anybody sure. than it ever has been because we have all these, all these technologies available to us. It's almost like you get this distraction. Right. You know? That's right. Um, and that's that's something that I've always admired about F3 is you kind of get back to grassroots, you know, as far as um, doing something physical with one another. And then you have the fellowship factor as well, because you can't mess around on your phone when you're when you're, you know, nope. heart rates 170 and breathing 100. There's, there's, really, really there's no yeah. anonymity. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. There's no anonymity. And from the very start, we've been very it's just become intentional a, about it. it. It's just become a thing we do. So, you know, we have the principles and all that. But the. So it, we have a lot of other little things. This one's called Mumble Chatter. And Mumble Chatter. I love all mean, the things that you guys have, by the way. <laughs> yeah, like it's the, just like, yeah. well, I would see something well, on Facebook. Right. Or Twitter or Slack. Those are our main things. Mm-hmm. And I said, ah, that's a good idea. They had in Seattle. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And it just spreads. So if you go to another workout in another place, in Phoenix, they're using all the same stuff. So we have a Lexicon. We have a website. Mm-hmm. Yeah. F3Nation.com, awesome. F3Nation.com. <laughs> and if you get on there, it's like you can look it up and say, why do these guys say mumble chatter? So these are, or truth nuggets, what is, what is that, right? And it'll be an explanation of what that is. And mumble chatter means at a workout, we talk. Yeah. So the leader's leading it, you know, and there's a guy next to you, and you're like, yeah, uh, you an FNG? Nah, I'm from, I'm, from, uh, I'm from Detroit. All right, what are you doing here? And you start talking. Or the guy is an FNG, and it's like, you know, you know, where'd you go to college? Sorry, for, for our listeners, explain FNG. Oh, about. friendly yeah. new guy. Yeah, so it's somebody that's never done a Yeah, yeah. So yeah. if you've yeah. watched Vietnam movies, <laughs> somebody, you might have heard the term. Somebody would have listened, by the way. Somebody would have listened to that. I'm like, what is an FNG? Well, that's a funny thing. <laughs> if you watch Vietnam movies and you hear the F term FNG, the F has a bad connotation. Mm-hmm. And that came from um, a mistake the American military engaged in in Vietnam. So up until uh, Vietnam, uh, units went to war and units left war and you stayed the entirety of the time Mm -hmm. and you would get new guys replacements and you would integrate them into the unit uh because you know that you were together in vietnam was the first time where you would go for a specific period of time so officers six months enlisted men for a year so instead of going there to win the war you went there to survive Mm -hmm. and a new guy was a burden Mm -hmm. and instead of part of the unit so they would say ah who's that guy fng yeah. They didn't want to talk to him because they were afraid he was going to die so fast that it would be a waste of time. So they were derisive. So can you imagine showing up? You're 18 years old. You go to basic training. You show up in, in Southeast Asia and you're in Vietnam in combat. And you guys who have been there for a while, instead of saying, you know, welcome to, you know, first of 305, whatever, this is how we do things here. My name's, you know, Bob. This is Sergeant John's. This is how we do this. Imagine instead of getting that, you get like, you know, just uh, FNG. FNG, right? yeah. Now it wasn't. There's a lot, you know, if you watch Vietnam movies, you know, I wasn't in the Vietnam era. I was right behind the Vietnam era, and I knew a lot of Vietnam vets. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of Vietnam vets when I went in. And that, that's not an accurate depiction of how the military was. But it was, it was enough of it that that was the case. And the American military has fixed that. We don't deploy one-offs anymore. It's units for that very reason. Mm-hmm. So uh, what we try to do in F3 is to take a bad thing and turn it into a good thing, uh, if we can. Uh, something that's in the vernacular. So FNG, you know, guy shows up. We all have nicknames. Guy, what do I say? Say you're an FNG. What does that mean? Does it mean no? It means friendly new guy, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we say that, so we say to you, we we are glad you were here. In fact, we're here for you. Often a guy will say at the end of a workout, oh, "Sorry, I slowed you guys down." You know, new guy or whatever. I threw up, which we call splashing Merlot. So, <laughs> I mean, it's very common. I love that. I love that. Well, it's very common for an FNG to show up, you know, with a fanny pack or whatever, you know, or a towel or a water bottle. We don't do any of that, right? I mean, we just say, you might want to put that down. You're not going to want to carry that. You're not going to need it anyway. Uh, but, uh, you know, if he splashes Merlot during the workout, we're waiting for him. 
oh, we want the guy to come back. And he's like feeling bad. And we're like, look, man, each of us has been where exactly where you are. So don't get it in your head. There's a, a darn thing wrong with it. Um, you know, you're on your first step on, on a journey. So just keep going. Uh, don't worry about that. You know, you're a friendly new guy, right? So we've all, we've all kind of been there. So we want a guy, we want, we want stickiness. We, you know, we want, a guy comes once, we want him to come twice. You know, we don't have stats on that. Uh, but I think it's pretty good. I think our recidivism is pretty good. If a guy starts coming, you know, and it's like a church, I guess. We have our priesters, now Christmas Easter guys. We have guys that just come <laughs> to workouts. You know, we have just come to workouts. But we have guys that are, you know, we have every level of guys. Guys are incredibly, uh, this has been life-changing for them, and they're absolutely dedicated to spreading it. And they'll go anywhere. You know, I need you to go to Kenya. I'll go to Kenya. You know, anywhere to plan a workout. Um, and it's because that's how every organization is, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and and so we've we've just embraced that instead of instead of worrying about it. Yeah, it's like from from a marketing perspective, we call it a brand ambassador versus ah, versus yeah, a right, participant. Right. You know, so um, no, it's it's incredible. I think every organization has some level of different different level of commitment with whatever somebody wants to give or get out of right. out of the organization right. they, that right. they find themselves a part of. Yep. Um, man, it, it's been a great conversation with you this morning. Um, we are almost out of time, and uh, we'd right. like to have you back just you, to talk about yeah. your law firm. You, yeah. Never, yeah. you never even got down your list. You only asked me like three questions. I should have uh, uh, warned uh, you. Uh, yeah. No, you're it's, a storyteller. Yeah. I love yeah. it. I, we, we love to hear it. Um, so at the end of the show, we always like to ask a, a fun question or, or a funny question. And uh, my question for you, it's going to be the same that I, thing that I asked Gary, but it, I, I can't resist. Um, so what is your favorite nickname that you, that you've either given or heard in, in F3 and Y? Huh? Um, and uh, F and G does not count. By no, way. it's actually, it's pretty easy. Um, so our, the, our favorite, my favorite nickname in OBTs too is, uh, is Egypt. Egypt? Egypt. Okay. And, uh, the guy, the hospital name of the guy, uh, who's named name. Egypt is, uh, is Christian Bumfuck. Okay. So Bumfuck Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Where's that last name from? German. Uh, yeah. It's like B O H M F A L K. Is it actually pronounced Bumfuck? Bumfuck. It's, pronounced it's, it's, pronounced it's, it's pronounced Bumfuck. 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 Yeah. You know, awesome. I, love yeah, it. Yeah. I love that. So, yeah, Egypt. That's perfect. That's, that, yeah. that is a good one. Yeah. That's good. Well, David, thank you so much for uh, for joining us today. Um, hopefully, you join us for lunch, and um, we'll uh, see you next time. Yeah, great. I'm yeah. honored. Yeah, yeah honored. Thanks. <laughs> thanks for joining us, man.